I got an iconic. I'm pretty sure that's what they're going for here. Uh, iconic knife. Yeah, I have no idea, man. Let's get it out of here and see what's up. Let's see if it's iconic. Life with an edge. Pretty cool box. I mean, boxes go, right? Life with an edge. It's a good philosophy. What, are, what am I doing here? Come on, man. What's up? What's in here? Okay. Iconic. There wasn't anything else in this box, by the way. I mean, I, I don't think so. I don't think that comes out. So, like, yeah, that don't come out. So there's no paperwork. There's no... This, this is it right here. Iconic. Let's get rid of the box. Unless the box tells us something about the knife. I may have to... Yeah, I'm, I, let's see if it's got a model number. Let's get it out of there. Boop. Yeah, no model number. I see D2 steel, but let me let me find out so I know what I'm talking about. Okay, so this is the iconic aperture. It's in D2 steel. And it's got micarta. I mean, it's soft micarta. It's kind of smooth. I'm not gonna say it's polished. It's it's just really smooth. Blade's pretty smudgy. See if I can't make this knife look a little better coming out of the box. D2 steel, and they've done a pretty good job with this D2 because it looks, I you know, I've said it on the channel many, many times, but this looks like tool steel. Look at it. I mean, if that doesn't remind you of like an old school craftsman ratchet, you know. Man, that's some good-looking tool steel right there. Beautiful. Yeah. All right, let's run this action a little bit, then we'll we'll break it down and take it apart. And so I got a thumb stud and a spidey flick. Definitely on bearings. I can feel them running, but it's pretty darn smooth. Almost drop shut, blade centered. Very snappy. And, I mean, is that a spear? Which, I mean, it's probably going to get the argument, nah, bro, it's a drop point. That's why I don't talk about blade shapes, because it's just, a lot of times it's an interpretation or whatever, and to be honest, I really don't even care. You know, I mean, I like what I like, and, you know, I, it's just not a semantic argument that I'm willing to get into. Because if, if you, you know, if I said that's a spear and you said it's a drop point, my response is, okay. Because, you know, all right, let's call it a drop point. I'm good. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not going to drag it all down into those weeds. I'm just saying it's not that important to me. And, and listen, I am in no way saying that it shouldn't be important to you. Like, I know that there's aficionados to everything. I mean, whether it's guns or women or motorcycles or men or politics or, you know, they're like, like the willing to get down in the weeds and memorize every blade shape and blade steel and the composition. I mean, it's amazing. Some of the cats I run into that could tell me the composition of the steel in this blade. Well, it's got, you know... 4% chromium and you know and of course somebody right now is going to go bro that that blade don't have any chromium in it okay man I get it and that's awesome but I, I think I've talked about this before I'm not a detail guy I'm a sensory person you know how's it feel what's it sound like you know um, you know when I put it in hand and I'm touching it and feeling it now can you be a detail oriented person or remember the model numbers the chemical composition and appreciate the sensory side yeah of course you can i'm not saying that i'm one and you're the other you know it's amazing how quickly people want to get into the ping pong game of well you i'm not saying that you can't be i'm just saying i'm touchy feely and i'm not down on the specifics never have been 
I mean, I was in the equipment business for a while, and you know, it's amazing how many people I was surrounded by that could tell me every designation for every bulldozer made by every manufacturer. The case model is this, and the you know the Komatsu models that, and you know, and I kind of struggle in that business because I I can't memorize any of that stuff. Just I, probably because it just doesn't interest me. Um, but. Yeah, I digress. I'm just down in the sensories, man. How's it feel? How's it run? What's it look like? And, uh, yeah, so now we're going to find out <laughs> what's inside here. Oh, what's the matter with me, y'all? Help me. Need an intervention, man. It's like, bro, just calm down. Just review the knife. Just talk about the knife. And then Amazon would probably accept your reviews and <laughs> you know, I mean, things will be better. Uh, yeah. I mean, could you imagine, like, living with me, being one of my kids or my wife? I mean, poor people. What'd they do to deserve me, man? Right? I mean, kind of a stonewashed liner, pretty cool. Good looking bearings, kind of dirty in here and dry. I do think when I said that I could feel that action, that I'm going to improve that just by cleaning this up and lubing it. Um, I'm not going to pull this other scale. I don't see oil in here anywhere. I mean, kind of as a not a positive thing. But, you know, I think the knife's going to run better with a little bit of my magic mystery hops number nine stuff. You know. Beautiful blade, golly, wonderful, I like it. And uh, I'm pretty sure that I bought this knife for sensory reasons. I didn't buy it because the blade steel. I didn't buy it because the micarta was made in Italy or whatever, you know what I mean? I looked at it and I go, oh, I kind of like the looks of that knife. It sort of reminds me of a couple, maybe a, a couple Asher models and man, I saw an Asher model the other day uh, with G10 scales. The Nero, uh, I, I digress, I don't remember the model number, but man, it sold for like $60. And I kind of regret not getting in it. I just thought, yeah, I'm, you know, I passed over it. And I should have gotten after it because those Asher knives. I had a Douglas, and I featured it on the channel, and then I purged it out. Um, but golly, did I like that that knife? There's just something old school and traditional and wonderful about what they're doing over there with those Asher knives. Really like them, and uh, I should have got that one. And when I saw it go for that price, I was like, oh. Well, then I went to the website. And I thought, man, I need to look at some of these. And man, are they just wonderful. And every model, every model sold out. Yeah, none available. So, I mean, I'm kind of giving it away now. But if you see an Asher knife uh, running on eBay and you want to run me up, I'll probably be bidding on it. So don't do that to me. Just let me win it. I'll feature it on the channel and then you can hit me up behind the scenes and go bro I let you win that knife so you should sell it to me for less than you paid for it no don't do that you know pay me a little more than I paid for it you know let me keep the channel afloat alright I haven't been drinking I promise just babbling, man. I'm having fun. This is a beautiful knife, and I'm enjoying it. Uh, I don't know. So the pocket clip's recessed into this micarta. I don't know if it's going to need some tension. Maybe. But I already know right now I have to take this back off because there's two little scale screws right here or right here. I'm not sure which. Is it that one or this one? I think it's this one. Mm, I'm going to say that's more of a cap screw, so it's these. 
that cap screw is going to hold down um, the pocket clip. Yeah, so I'm not a big fan of recessing in that micarta with the clip, but it does have two screws. It's got a lot of straight lines, and so, I mean, if you were going to do it that way, we could hope for the best. I think it'll be fine. You know, I talk about that wallering out those pocket clips a lot, but I don't have one example of it doing that. So, I don't want to overemphasize that. It's just not an optimum way, man. My cart is soft, G10 is soft, and then we're securing the pocket clip into it. Now, I have had problems with pocket clips, so maybe that's why. Just, it's just a, a critical point, you know. Of consideration so this one's recessed and then it's got those crown screws it should run just fine it's got a ton of tension on it so I don't think I'm too worried about it yeah the action on it now I mean it just needs a little bit of TLC man Wow you ready for this action look at this I mean, I don't know anything about this company. I don't, you know, I, I don't know if they've gotten a, a, a one-star review from the world. I have no idea. But I'm telling you the action on this knife now. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, it's, it's A-level action. A-level action. Wonderful. Very smooth. Super easy to deploy, snappy with the thumb flick, the spidey flicks, very snappy, excellent detent, and then just drop shut smooth, centered blade. Mm -mm -mm. Let's talk about ergonomics. So in hand, I mean, they just, they got it right. I mean, it's just very comfortable. Doesn't have a flipper tab. But it's, it's hollowed pretty well, and then I'm gripped in. So confident, or not so confident, confident, very confident. I mean, without, without a flipper tab, I'm going to bring it right up to a confident grip. I do feel pretty confident that I could go forward with this needle-sharp spear of a blade, meet resistance, and push through without losing my grip and coming up and over onto that blade. And my hand becoming a casualty. I do think that I'm confident that I could maintain the grip on this knife um, with forward resistance. And that's what that rating is all about that I give right there. Um, pocket clip disappears in the hand. No issues there. It, I mean, where it lands, I don't, I don't sense it at all. Really nice grip. Can I reverse that and cap it with my thumb it's got a really nice platform right there that's built for it yeah wonderful reverse grip very comfortable let's run that pocket clip and my guess is looking at it it's going to run just as well as the rest of this knife it's going to fare awesome in the thick and the thin material yeah look at all the way home just the tiniest little bit, less than a quarter of an inch, poking its little head out there. Kind of a fatter clip, but man, it's got a good profile. It looks really good, and that hole is going to allow me to pull that out. It's got super tension, and so the retention on this knife, yeah, it's like that. And my spot back here, yeah, this thing's just going to really wonderfully slide right into that spot one hand in one hand out excellent retention I wonder if I can make blade contact no blade contact through the scales the tip ooh come on don't let me get that oh my goodness look at how close that is and you can see my fingers stuffed in there see how I've got it pressed in there I'm not feeling that tip Boy, it sure looks like I should, but I'm not. So I'm going to pass that. Do I want to pass it? Yes. But, I mean, listen. I don't have to go out of my way to fail the knife. I don't feel that tip going that way. It's not catching me. 
on my finger at all. So I'm gonna pass the tip, the clip, and no incidental contact on the back of the blade. Whew, golly, that's as close as you can be without, without failing that portion. Um, I wonder if this thing's sharp. I mean, it looks sharp. The tool still looks wonderful. This paper is kind of funky. We'll see how it does on this magazine paper. I can already tell you that it's just sharp as a razor blade. Yeah, yeah, unbelievably sharp. I want to feel it. Mmm, sticky. Sticky icky. Yeah, wonderful grind on that blade. Out of the factory. Excellent. Um, price and availability, man. That's all we're left. And I've already got it pulled up. So, I mean, just the, the grind, the polish, what they've done with this blade, the micarta, the action... The washers, the bearings, not washers, the bearings. How much? Okay, so, you know, my budget sense used to be $50. It's kind of changed because everything's more expensive. I mean, I've mentioned this a, a few times. Trucks, housing, gas, everything's more money. So, to think that I could just keep my budget knife at 50 bucks seems a little out of line. However, so this iconic aperture... Um, White Mountain Knives is the source on this thing, and they're asking 64, I think 64.99. So if you use the code down below DM10, the letter D, the letter M, and then the numbers one and zero, DM10. Put it in the coupon line once you go to your cart and you go to pay. Put DM10 in the coupon, you get 10% off of this knife which would bring it down to around $58 and some change, I believe. So under $60, D2 micarta. Do I think that this knife is worth, let's, let's call it 60 bucks, because that's free shipping and no tax from White Mountain Knives. So is it worth 58 bucks? Let's call it 58. Is it worth 58 bucks? In my opinion, Heck yeah, this thing's worth 58 bucks. I mean, where have these guys been, man? I don't even know who they are, who the manufacturer is. I mean, again, I, I digress. I'm not going to go through that whole thing. I'm not a detail guy. I don't know these guys' background. Are they? Is it Chinese? Is it is it uh, South Dakotaese? I don't know, man. I don't know where they come from. I just know that I really love the look of this knife. The ergonomics, the action, the feel, it's a great little budget piece. And I'm going to call 58 bucks a budget piece. I appreciate y'all watching. I mean, check one out. 